What's cracking, you guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mango Grove. My name is Krusha, and this is today's Bitcoin and Solana analysis video. I'm going to try and keep this one as short as possible because, uh, yeah, I'm still a bit breathless today. I'm uh, still recovering slowly but surely. Um, however, today I first want to focus on, well, price action, particularly in terms of any pullback opportunities on the chart, as well as I'll be discussing any overhead targets. I do believe that we have now sort of, uh, well, we've reached a threshold where we can now look for additional targets on the chart. Okay, so I have one more for you today. So we'll be going over that. Um, in addition to, well, Solana is looking good, and I do believe that we are um, heading towards a... Uh, a good weekly close and if we get this good weekly close that could sort of uh, set us up for another potential trade opportunity okay so with that we can well jump right in of course it goes without saying guys that like button goes a very very long way so if you haven't already smashed the like please go ahead and do so but if you want to wait until the end to see if you derive any value from here then by all means you can wait until the end now with this, we can get into the chart. I first want to start off with, um, well, any pullback opportunities because I'm noticing a lot of people are looking to FOMO in right here, especially after this beautiful move that we've had where Bitcoin has spanned, I believe, what, a good 33% to the upside so far? A good 40% to the upside, never mind. Um, so 40% to the upside. Now, if you had to ask me, Krisha, would you actually catch a bid right here at this point in time, right here? Um, and the answer to that very simply is no. Okay, and why is that? That is because I do believe that Bitcoin is currently up against resistance, right? Now, what is this resistance? Well, over the past couple of days, I've been giving you guys some fresh new targets. I gave you guys two new targets to the upside, and this is it right here, okay? I give you 20.8K, which is this yellow line segment on my chart, and then the overhead one was came in at around 22.9K. Okay, now so far we closed a 12-hour um, a candle just one hour ago. And now if I take you guys on over to the 12 to the 12 hour time frame, you'll see that we currently are getting rejected off of that region. OK, now at what point I, will I look for Bitcoin to actually break this region to the upside? Right. What am I looking for for the perfect bullish recipe at this current region of resistance? Well, for that, guys, very simple. I'm looking for strength along 22.9 K. Okay. As soon as I start seeing similar price action to this along 22.9K, I will be looking for further upside from Bitcoin. But for now, um, it is what it is. We're currently up against resistance. I am not buying into resistance. Okay, at the very least, I want to see strong price action across the four-hour time frame as well as the 12-hour time frame against 22.9K for me to anticipate the next leg up. Okay, now what am I looking for primarily? Well, for that, let's go ahead and first um, try to figure out where is this trend being established, right? This trend, guys, believe it or not, the volatility has been so immense that this trend is currently being established on two time frames, the one hour time frame and the four hour time frame. OK, however, I want to um, draw more emphasis on the four hour time frame, because I do believe that when the pullback opportunities really come to us, it is the four hour that really gets the pickup. OK, now in the last video I had presented to you, um, well, two pickup indicators in a way, right? We had the 21 EMA being a very, very good signature, essentially guiding that overarching trend that Bitcoin has established ever since. Let's actually go and pull it up quickly. OK, ever since um, we broke out of the 21 EMA, this was back when uh, Bitcoin was sitting at 16.5K, guys, 16.5K. Every touch of the 4 hour 21 EMA was met with a swift, swift pickup even right here. Now we had a bit of a chop. However, we reclaimed it, the 10 SMA and the 10 KIN and that level there at 20.8 K and then swiftly saw a rally all the way up to the next level at 22.9 K. So once again, for me to anticipate the next pullback opportunity, I will be looking towards the four hour 21 EMA. Now, for those of you who have access to the mango dynamic indicator, you guys have something better than the 21 EMA. Okay. Something that's not chopped you out as much. And if I go ahead now and put on the mango dynamic, you'll see that ever since we broke out of it, right, every test of the dynamic was met with swift support, right? Even right here, we did see a close under, but no confirmation. OK, so while the 21 EMA chopped you out, the dynamic kept you in the trade. Once again, we took it out here, trended on the mango dynamic, found support and then rallied. So once again, I'll be looking towards the mango dynamic for the next pullback opportunity. 
Okay, so if we come down there, I think the next good bid is going to be bidding the Mango Dynamic because that has been the overarching signature. At what point does the signature break? As soon as we break the four hour Mango Dynamic to the downside, I'm saying the signature that this has established since 16.5K has officially come to an end. Okay, at that point, we can look for signatures on our high time frames. But so far, the, the four hour is the time frame to be following right now. All right, so now we've established where the resistance is at. We've established, okay, what would be the next better bid opportunity to be had. Now, question is, can we even expect the bid to come into us anytime soon? Well, for that, you guys know my rule on this. I usually look towards the Mango Dashboard to really uh, help me figure out, should I be expecting a pullback here? Now, I usually look at the time frame where the trend is being established. Now, I know that it's going to be the lower time frames, the four hour time frame for one. Okay, now Bitcoin USDT on the four hour time frame, guys, look at the volatility on there. Okay, it's long. Yes, we got a bullish signal on this nine days ago. If you are someone who caught a trade based on the bullish signal, you're up by a good 28% on that trade. Okay, however, volatility flashing 96. 96 in volatility. When you see these hot red numbers, that is basically a signaling caution on the chart. Okay, it's telling you that, hey, perhaps it's time you wait on a pullback. Price is looking a bit frothy here. Okay, so now it depends on whether or not we should be expecting a shallow pullback or a deeper pullback. Usually when the trend is still long, okay, and volatility flashing 96, all I'm expecting on the chart is a shallow pullback. I only expect a deeper pullback if this trend flips neutral. Okay, when it flips neutral and the volatility is dwindling down, that's when I'll start looking for a deeper pullback on the chart. But so far this is telling me that, okay, the, yes, a pullback can be expected, but um, nothing too intense for now until we see more price action on the chart telling us that, hey, perhaps the bears are going to start taking over on the lower time frames. OK, but this is the four hour picture so far. By the way, guys, the, the Mango dashboard can be found on app.mangoresearch.co. There is a seven day free trial that just got released. So for those of you who truly want to try it out, go ahead and uh, well check it out now with the seven day free trial. So with this, we can get back into the charts. Now um, we can see that, okay, price is up against resistance. And um, if we start showing strength along 22.9K, we can look for the next move to the upside. Now I do believe that this could be a good segue into, well, the next bullish target overhead. I told you now that I have one more bullish target for you guys, right? So where is that target really coming in at? And what you guys need to understand is that I'm not just uh, getting these targets out of thin air. I'm using price action with volatility and momentum and other variables to, well, look for the next target on the chart. And as far as the next bullish target is concerned for Bitcoin, we're now looking at $25,000 as the next target on the chart. From where price is at right now to $25,000, that's going to be a good 8.64% to the upside still. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the next volatility adjusted target. If you guys want to go ahead and take note of the exact number, it's $25,030. Alrighty. With this, guys, I actually want to get on over to the macro timeframes. Now, I speak primarily to those of you who are still sort of, um, you guys are confused, confused on, you know, what to really expect during this juncture of the market. So a lot of people, I understand, are likely falling victim to recency bias here. Because as things stand, guys, right now, we are sort of emerging out of a bear market, right? This is a this is a beautiful rally. However, the trend once again is not technically being established. Yes, we've taken out some very very key highs. However, we're yet to look, see the higher low on the chart. So I'll be expecting the higher low to come in. Now, of course, I'm just drawing random uh, squigglies on my chart. I don't know if the higher low is going to come in at 20k or 18.7k. We'll have to wait and watch as to what price action really wants to do here. However, I'm noticing that the confusion is primarily based on, uh, well, people are wondering, you know, is this just a mere sort of um, relief rally in the middle of an overarching bear market? And what is my plan for all of this? How am I handling the entire thing? Well, honestly, guys, I've been very, very candid on my entire plan. As many of you guys know, I accumulated a huge bag of my allocation here at around 18.7K, right? This was even before the FTX debacle happened. Allow me to just um, switch off some of my lines that I do not need. I'm going to switch off the target as well. That's right. So I, I accumulated a huge chunk of my position at 18.7K before the FTX debacle happened. Whatever I had left of it, I uh, accumulated some of the 15K region. And then I basically went and placed a bit at 13K just in case price sort of falls. That's not 13K, but 13K is somewhere around here. Okay. 
just um, if price falls, at least had a bit there to take advantage of 13K. However, I told you guys that, you know what, once Bitcoin gets up over 18.7 once again, so basically past the FTX debacle, basically undo the entire move, I told you guys that I'll be knocking off my 13K bid, which I did. Okay, so I do not have the 13K bid at all on the books. And gun to my head, do I think that Bitcoin could come down to 13K? What is the probability of that happening? I think the probability of 13K now has reduced significantly ever since we took back 18.7K. Okay, so as far as my read on the market is concerned, I have re I've been presenting a case for you guys where and I'm looking at bull market signatures, right? At what point should I expect the next bull run on the books, where this entire downtrend shifts to an uptrend, essentially where we see a drastic change in macro order flow. At what point do the buys basically exceed the sells? Okay, now for those of you in the Mango Seed program, you guys have an entire module just dedicated to order flow, and you guys know exactly how powerful it can be. Sean has also gone ahead and discussed a few strategies that you can employ just by looking at order flow. So if there's any module that I would uh, recommend that you watch again, it would be that one. But what we're seeing here, guys, is a shift in order flow, okay? And that's why I've been discussing bull run signatures with you guys. Now, I want to bring up bull run signatures because I had discussed three, right? Um, the first one being the four-day dynamic, which has triggered, by the way. This has gone off. The second one is the weekly dynamic, okay? And then the third one is the monthly stokes, right? So now from the three, we technically, from the ones I discussed at the very least, we technically only have one out of the three that has now triggered. Now I'm using these indicators to help me filter out whether or not this is just a mere bull rally in the middle of a bear market, or is this a turn in the market? Okay, because this is essentially going to help me with, with my higher level plan. And that's why I have the bull run signatures, okay? And that's essentially why I am going over these signatures with you guys as soon as they trigger. Now, I wanted to bring this one up today primarily because, of course, people are confused, okay? And that's why I'm saying always build your, your systems. Put in the work right now to build your systems to help you filter out the bull traps from the turns in the market. So far, I'm giving you what I'm looking at. Okay, and I wanted to bring this up today also because other than the three indicators that I brought up, there is a fourth one. Okay, and that fourth one is about to trigger. Okay, now I want to bring up the fourth one with you guys right now. So let's go ahead and clear the chart. Perfect. And now the fourth one is this. It's actually found on the weekly time frame. Let's go ahead and turn on the mango dynamic indicator. Now this too is hinged on the mango dynamic. Now the initial weekly dynamic um, signature that I brought up was based on the Ichimoku setting. You guys can see for those of you who have access to the mango dynamic indicator, there are various calculation methods. There's the dynamic volatility in Ichimoku. What I'd given you initially was based on the Ichimoku and the 55 simple moving average. Of course, I will be linking that video where I go over the three bull run signatures at the end. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't already done so. But this is the fourth one. Okay, now this is based on the original dynamic calculation. All right now, this is it. Now I'm currently on the weekly time frame with the dynamic on and I'm just going to zoom into the current price action. And you'll see that price is currently living over the dynamic cloud right there. Okay, guys, if we close like this, this is going to be another bull run signature. Okay, I'll be looking for two, once again, two consecutive closes over the weekly. So if we close this candle over the dynamic and the next one over the dynamic, this is another beautiful bull run, bull run signature. And just to show you guys how well it's done in the past, first off, I'm going to just zoom out of this picture, just when the bear run started, okay, when the bear market started. Every test of the weekly dynamic was met with resistance. This is the first time since the initiation of the bear market back when Bitcoin was still sitting at $52,000. This is the first time since then that we've actually managed to penetrate the dynamic to the upside. This is bullish. Okay. Now, I've told you guys this before. When I see these turns, I'm looking at this as not an, a, a sign of, okay, immediate continuation to the upside. Well, it could be that. What I am looking at this as is, well, the music about to start playing. Okay, there is music when it comes to markets. When we're heading into a bull run, we're looking at the music beginning to play. When we're ending the bull run, we're looking at the music stop playing, or rather the volume getting reduced. When we saw a break in the weekly dynamic here for the first time since the initiation of the bull run from when we emerged out of the COVID dump, okay, notice how we had not lost the weekly dynamic. When we lost it for the first time, that was the first sign and that, okay, 
the trend is about to stop. The music is about to stop playing. Okay, so this has been very, very good in catching that overarching trend shift. So once again, we have finally found a break of the weekly dynamic. However, no confirmation just yet. Okay, so I'll be looking for confirmation above the cloud to give me the next tell. More often than not, we usually get a retest of the cloud. So if we get rejected on that 22.9K region that I spoke to you guys about on the four hour time frame, if we get rejected there, then honestly, if we get the bid, the best bid opportunity, in my opinion, that would be a very, very easy to manage off of, will come in at around 21.5K. That is it right here. Okay, so now that's 21.5K dynamic support. Uh, for those of you who want to take note of it, please go ahead and do so. Now, I know I received a lot of messages for those of you, you know, who are still sort of spooked with the whole FTX debacle and you guys are wondering where should I trade with the markets running right now. I personally right now, guys, I'm still trading on BitGet. I know they do have proof of reserves. So for those of you looking to try out new exchanges, um, check out BitGet if you haven't already checked it out. There is a link in the description below where you can get some $8,000 in deposit bonuses. But also right now they have like an event where there's like a surprise sort of gift where if you sign up you can get some three to thirty dollars in in coupons actually um this is based on the chinese new year i think this is the chinese new year event so if there's any good time to take advantage of it would be now okay so but this is of course only if you're looking for new exchanges to trade on so go ahead and check it out if you are looking for something new so now this wraps up our bitcoin analysis you guys have my thoughts on the lower time frames as well as the higher time frames as well as my thoughts on this overarching move okay we're going to keep track of the bull run signatures to really you know figure out is this a proper turn in the market so far we're about to get the second tick on our four bull run signatures so the more ticks we get, the more confirmation we get on this being the macro turn in the market. Alrighty. All right. So with this, we can jump into Solana. Here it is on the weekly time frame. Now, <laughs> this chart is looking rather exciting, especially considering we're getting into a weekly close. I think depending on the close, we could be presented with a very, very good trade opportunity. However, I don't want to jump the gun. I think what's going to give us a better tell on the next bid opportunity is going to be the Mango Dashboard. Because uh, with that, we can understand if, uh, well, should we be looking for a better bid on Solana? Can we expect a pullback right here? Right. So with that, let's get into the Mango Dashboard. Um, by the way, guys, the, the dashboard can be found on app.mangoresearch.co. We have recently released a seven day free trial based on popular requests. Uh, this has been one of the most requested things from us, a seven day free trial. So, yeah, we have granted that wish. You guys can now go and sign up for a seven day free trial. But I'm currently on the daily time frame on the dashboard. And right off the bat, guys, I'm noticing the Sol USDT is rank four. Now, what you guys need to understand is that this is ranked based on trading volume right now. OK, this was not ranked four before. There was something else uh, uh, besides Solana up here. But Sol just managed to well up. Um, well, Sol actually managed to climb up based on trading volume. But what I'm noticing here is that, okay, daily um, trend is still long, long is bullish. I think we can all agree with that. Sol has been running aggressively. If you caught the trade based on this long trend signal, uh, which came in two weeks ago, good God, you're already up by a good 90% on that trade. Okay, so 90% on there. This trend has been relentless. However, volatility flashing 89. Hmm. When I see this, when I see 89, um, it's telling me that, okay, the move is frothy. Okay, I think we can all technically agree with that. And in a way, in a way, because you know what, price can run for as long as it wants to run, depending on the, the buying that steps in on the chart. However, when I see 89, uh, when I see volatility flashing 89, I'm saying that, okay, it's getting frothy. But yes, there is maybe a little bit more juice left on this time frame for the bulls to squeeze out. Okay, another thing that's paired up with volatility over here. So yes, we're seeing volatility on those high numbers. When you see volatility flash like high 90s or mid 90s, we can then expect a pullback. But what's cool about this picture right now is that not only are we seeing 89 on vol, which is still pretty high. Yes, it could have a bit more juice, still pretty high. But notice the flag that's gone off. We have potential bearish divergence. Now, please note the words that's being used. Potential, not confirmed potential. This is just trying to grab your attention towards looking at your oscillators to spot that divergence play. Okay, so it's saying potential bearish divergence, fall in 89, however, trend still long. Okay, we could see a pullback. How about the four hour? Four hour, okay, Sol USDT bullish, came in 14 hours ago. Notice your returns on this. You're actually down by a couple uh, by 0.82% on this. Okay, so we're not seeing that follow through that we want to see. And however, volatility flashing 90. 
90 volatility, we could actually get a better bid opportunity on the books, okay? That's why I always tell you guys, make sure you're looking at your Mango dashboard to figure out whether or not you could get a better bid, okay? So now we can see that the dashboard is telling us that, you know what, you could gun for a better bid. So as far as the bid opportunity is concerned on the weekly, the trade opportunity rather, um, as soon as we close a weekly over this region at around $24.15, if I just zoom out, I want you guys to notice how important a level that was back in the bull market consolidation in 2021. Price came down here a swift move only to close over. Okay, we never lost this region at all. Like this was a very, very volatile zone for Solana. However, it held 24, uh, 2418 apologies as, re as that region of support. We're currently threatening to reclaim that region. Even if we manage to, well, get a close over 2418, okay, that would be a good trade setup to at the very least $30. Now that might look like a small range on my chart, eh? But check this out. Okay, let's go ahead and actually calculate that range from the bottom of that zone all the way up to $30.46. That's going to be another 26% to the upside. That is the range that we're looking at. That is the swing play that we're gunning for. Okay, but this is contingent on this week closing over $24.18. Alrighty, so if we close over, that's when the trade opportunity actually triggers. Okay, now let's also go ahead and see what um, prices. Oh, what do you know? What do you know? Okay, <laughs> weekly Solana <laughs> against the Mango Dynamic is currently up against Dynamic Resistance. This is critical. Do not, I would not be catching a trade here. Okay, the dashboard is saying this is not the time to be um, to be going long. The um, what well, the Dynamic is saying, be careful up against Dynamic Resistance. And just to show you how well this has fared in the past. Ever since we started the, the bear market, Solana has not reclaimed the dynamic even once. Every test of it was a rejection, rejection, rejection. We tried to get up, rejection, tried to get up, rejection. This is once again, we're up against the dynamic. Historically, um, since back uh, when uh, Jan 2022, so it's been one year, we've been holding it as overhead resistance, okay? This is not the time to get cute. Um, wait on a decent pullback, wait on a level wherein you can actually manage your trade well. So right now, weekly is saying, nope, um, resistance overhead. How about the four hour? Okay, four hour though, is telling us that we're flagging up against that support at 24.18. So if we close the weekly over 24.18, Okay, I'll be looking for price to come down, graze this region right here, support at 10 kin, 10 SMA and 21 EMA, and then for the candle, candle to close over 2418. Okay, you want to see 2418 hold as support. That is very, very important. You want to see strength along that region because your entire trade setup is based on that thesis actually holding. Okay, 2418 holding and price rallying from there, getting up to the top of the range at $30.46. And yeah, this pretty much wraps up our Solana analysis. Um, yeah, if you guys have any more thoughts on this chart, let me know in the comment section below. And if you guys like this video, don't forget to smash that like button and I will see you in the next update with this. Trade safely, trade stress-free, trade the mango way, trade the easy way. Ciao, guys.